have some uh, minutes set for the executive session? No, it's quite small. Yeah, we just struck those for right now because hmm? we weren't 100 percent ready on those, so we're just gonna strike okay. over it. Okay, with no. We have a section for public comments. Does anybody wish to speak with the board at this time? Well, I do like to mention something. If someone mentioned to me, which I consider important, is that they were at home and they were listening to the meeting, and they said that the fidelity was not clear, and you couldn't hear you guys. So I don't know if there's any way to make sure that someone monitors these things so so that the folks in television land or that who can't come out to see us for whatever reason, they can get a real representation rather than saying that they can't hear it and they lose interest. So that's one point. Yeah, we've had that comment before. We fiddled around with yeah, some of these stuff. But, uh, so it's only when it's Peg access. Peg access. Peg access. Peg access. You don't want that to the other then you can hear it. I can check right now. Yeah. What? It should be live. Let me check. The last meeting, I couldn't come up, and I don't usually watch them live, and you couldn't understand a word you were saying. Okay. Part of that's useless. Yeah, part of at, at the special town meeting, um, some of the peg access fund we released to look into that specifically oh, and useless. getting some of the games on uh, from the schools. So okay. that's what the access funds we released for to try to get this cleaned up and to try to. I think there was something with the sources of media, the type of media. I, I'm not going to claim to know, but yeah. the, the, one, the audio, video versus digital okay. versus however it goes out and, and the. I thought maybe yeah. they'd clear it up the next day, but it wasn't. Oh, it's not going to be an overnight issue. It's got to be a, a hardware, or be a change, device it change. It, was <clears throat> it It will get there, but it's not going to. But it's, I, I would think they could check it when it first starts the meeting to see if the sound is clear. Typically they do. And, but if, if there's any sort of um, issue between the, the live feed and how they're hearing it and the way it's being broadcast through cable, then that's not going to be picked up unless somebody, unless a resident says that they can't hear yeah. it. And then yeah. after once we get that complaint, then we'll forward it to our cable access to have them look into it. Could you put maybe put on the screen a phone number to call if the sound isn't right, so people could call right away? Well, let me request. talk. I'll be talking to the cable <coughs> access guy to see if he's willing to fill those calls. You know, otherwise, it should be easy enough for them to do. Yes. Yeah, they can't hear it. But we do know it's an issue, and that's what's been brought up before, and that's why part of the access funds we authorize it to go towards that. That's exactly why, because that complaint. We're trying to get it fixed. Hopefully it, it does. And I've, I've watched some meetings in the past afterwards, and, and they're clear. Yeah. But, uh, but I, it sounds like it's more of a random that you don't hear it. Than, than I don't think it's an ongoing issue as far as all the meetings you don't get good audio. I just think it happens randomly, and I don't know why. But it's working fine right now. Yep, Dennis. That's it's good. It's working fine right now. Okay. Well, the last meeting you could. No, I I understand that. I'm just saying it's yeah. working fine right now. Okay. So and it comes it in okay on YouTube. It's fine on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, okay. Definitely. All righty. I have something else. Okay. Is that I noticed they were pulling? Some company came and was pulling out telephone poles. And I'm speaking specifically at uh, hall number 16, which is on West Street. Mm -hmm. And they took out one short pole, and they didn't fill the hole. So I called Mass Electric on two occasions. And of course, it was snowing, and I don't know, of course, I don't know what happened today. But uh, did, someone, did someone from the town direct a group to come around and take the poles out? Or, or is that something they're just doing for their own maintenance? I was just concerned about one of my tenants or maybe somebody walking by, walking into that hole and, and hurt themselves, and then we have a problem. So I just wanted to bring it to someone's attention. So any of the utility work usually falls directly on the utilities. We don't schedule any of that work for them unless we get a specific complaint to ask for them to look into. Um, typically, 
National Grid's uh, in charge of setting poles and Verizon is in charge of removing them because they're the lowest on the pole. So um, I'd have to co I just have all to contact I, all I've done Verizon. Is I've called National Grid okay. on two occasions to file some sort of a, a notice that there's a big hole there. That's mm -hmm. all. And I don't know if it's that way all over town, but it clearly is at pole number 16. Okay. Okay, good. Anybody else have anything they wish to bring up with the board at this time? Okay. Okay. I see we have our Council on Aging Director here. I assume that's for the discussion with Hardwick. Okay. And they'll be showing up? Okay. Okay, uh, <coughs> solar development issues. Andrew, did you have anything you wish to? Um, something that um, Matt and I were discussing about putting on the agenda. We don't have a full presentation really to put together on it yet, uh, but what we were looking at doing was basically, um, you know, if we if we do decide that this is something that we want to go forward with on West Street, we're still pulling a little bit of information about the actual site. Um, that we would do it under um, Chapter 30B and basic, but um, look to do a um, design, uh, do a solicitation for engineers specific to this type of development and have some sort of screening committee to actually go through the um, engineer, the engineer RFP proposals to select the correct, uh, the, the correct per person for us. So uh, I just want to give you that update as far as where we were. And I know that Matt wanted to discuss it a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess the next meeting we can dive into that a little bit. But that's that's kind of where where we're at um, as far as that goes. Okay. Why don't you explain a little bit for everybody what the 30B yeah, so refers to? So 30B uh, refers to disposition or would refer to the disposition of real property. So we'd be looking at entering into a lease agreement on town-owned property um, for a site that we specify. And basically, we would be relying on an engineer to kind of provide a outline of what could go there um, and then represent the, and then once the town selects a developer and enters into a lease purchase, pro, or a lease program with them, that engineer would basically represent the town to make sure that it's installed them, um, in a way that is uh, beneficial to the town and not um, you know, just by any means necessary. Okay. Okay, so what would you like from us? Uh, nothing for right now. Uh, okay. It's just, just an update as far as where we're at, um, what we're looking into, and um, say, uh, ongoing process. Yep. Because we talked about a couple of sites, one down by the town barn and one uh, obviously up on Town Farm Road and um, at possible locations. Mm -hmm. then yeah, we just got to solicit a, a, um, as much information as we can about those sites before going out so that way any potential bidder would have as much information on that as possible. Mm -hmm. Are these sites compliant with the zoning board's um, proposed bylaws? That is, <coughs> would still be part of the package that we have to put together, I believe, but I couldn't guarantee without um, with any sort of certainty at this point. Well, if they're not, I wouldn't go too far with it. Exactly. So. You have some questions, Charlie, out there? There's questions out the floor. Mm -hmm. There's questions on the floor if you want to address them. Okay. Say it, well, I, Dennis. I thought, I don't want to tell you guys what to do, but I, I thought that once the solar bylaw was established, which, which it is, that we would just open up all the town-owned land that we might consider utilizing for solar. And and bring this information to the attention of companies out there who are looking to do business on a large scale. Now, most recently, I didn't realize it, but 
I was involved from the outside when the public safety building was being thought of and, and designed and planned. And I was at quite a few meetings, but not as a committee member, just as an observer. And I brought to their attention the fact, before they even built it, before they even designed it, that the state of Massachusetts had just completed or was completing a building net zero. You, you all, you, everybody understands what net zero is? Uh -huh. So I pleaded and fought and discussed and passed out pamphlets and did all sorts of stuff to try to get that building to be net zero because that's only sensible. I recently found out that the electric bill in that building for a whole year is $30,000. So I can't imagine building a building now for, for a town and not have some sort of solar connection. So when we use this opportunity, now that we have a solar bylaw, to open up this town for solar, I think that some connection should be made for the public safety building, uh, so that becomes, uh, so that doesn't become a liability, which it is now. When and with solar, it can it, it can be not a liability. When you're negotiating a solar agreement, you're negotiating a price per megawatt, same way that you are when you're when you're going to a constellation energy or buying it directly through National Grid. So you're still typically it's a it's a shorter, it's a um, lower amount than what the current rate is. I mean, typically eight cents a kilowatt versus 10 cents. So it would be, it would be savings, but you know, we currently kind of have that agreement with, I think about 70% of what our usage is right now with a site <coughs> that isn't even in Barry. So we don't not utilize solar, but we, uh, you know, that's really what the benefit to that building would be. It wouldn't be a net, a net zero cost. It would be a reduced cost using solar generated s -rays. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm the only way to significantly too, reduce it is to own the solar. We're not going to own the solar at this point. I'm saying it's too late on that building, but it could have been designed. I didn't realize it was costing us $30,000. And that's a lot of money for electricity. Mm -hmm. So now we have to think about how we're going to do it. We have Dean I and Dolly put up a system. Whatever they're making, it's profitable. There's a system on West Street. Whatever the company is making is profitable. There's a system on South Street. The same thing. There's a system by the by the uh, uh, sportsman's club. Whatever <coughs> they're, they're, they're doing there, there's a profit there. Why can't the town participate in profits like that, but as a town? Well, the and profits in the lease. That's what we're talking about, is leasing the property. So, so my question to you is why can you not go to concerns who do business in Massachusetts and offer to lease them our land and do business? Because we're talking about having an engineer represent our interests, so that way somebody doesn't just come in here and do whatever they want to do. But it takes a time to find, or it takes time to hire an engineer Right now, at least we can we can show the public that we're interested in doing business mm -hmm. because the only one who are doing business are the private people. Mm -hmm. the private doesn't have as much uh, regulatory uh, governance than right. uh, the and, public and sector. If, and if the town does have regulatory governance, that's mm -hmm. understandable. Right. But can't we bring in somebody in the next meeting to discuss this? Have a an open meeting with an engineer or with a Person who I've already outlined what my plan is, so uh, that's the way we're, we're going to proceed. But it's going to take a long time. It isn't is. It? Thank you for the input, Sam. Thank you. you. You're, you're, we're looking into that actually. We have one more back there, Charlie. Dennis wants to have some say. Charlie, Dennis wants to ask questions. Well. Yeah, Dennis. Andrew, did I hear you correctly that you mentioned West Street for a possible? No, I mentioned Town Farm Road. You, you said something about West Street. I'm sorry if I said West Street, but yeah, Town Farm. I, I think it's, I, I don't know why I must have just 
seem it just okay. mentioned West Street, and I have it written down in front of me, so uh, that's probably why. But no, Town Farm Road was the site that near by the, uh, the, old, the old landfill. Yeah, the old landfill area. Okay. Behind the senior center. Yeah. <coughs> okay, let's. Uh, okay. Do you have anything else you wanted to add? No. No. Okay. Certifying the useful life on the fire. Yep, so we just have a piece of paper in here that basically s that you guys are certifying that that uh, is apparatus, practice. the minimum lifespan is 30 years. That is sent to the um, bond company that will allow us to um, roll that band for 10, for, um, 10 years rather than five. So. That's what this is? Yes. Okay. Okay, we need a motion on that. Yep. Okay. Uh, let me read it. Right here. There you go. So that way we can, so typically with a bond, or a, a band, maximum amount of years that you can roll a band is five, uh, but if you can, if you determine that it, um, or it, it, if you determine that the length, or the useful life of the apparatus is long enough to justify a longer band, you can take that motion, we're looking to do a 10 year band roll, so that way we're effectively paying this off in 10 years rather than five years. I certainly think we have most of our fire trucks are more than 30 years old. <laughs> um, do we have anything that tells us the service life of it that we're doing this? Yeah, we're saying? just, this is a best, basically, we're, we're stating that um, our, uh, our interpretation is that we're going to have this piece of apparatus for, for 30 years. That is the intent of the board in, in its purchases by purchasing a piece of apparatus that's going to last us this long. Well, that's the idea of going new instead of used to last longer. Mm -hmm. I'd hope we, I hope we can sell it to someone else and get a new one before <laughs> then again. But I, I would expect the truck to last yeah. in thirty years. I don't think that's. Basically, it's that they want you to go out and bond a or ask for a 10-year borrowing on something that's only going to have a maximum useful life of eight years. So. My only concern is the statement of 30 years, it seems specific, and it's, well, it says maximum life of 30 years, which would mean it really wouldn't keep it beyond 30 years. I'm comfortable with it. I make a motion that we um, approve and sign this document that the maximum useful life of the new engine to be purchased will be 30 years. Okay, and I'll second that. Discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Aye. Aye. Okay, I guess. Discussion, um, if need be. Um, um, notice here from uh, Don Donahue, who's on the Cannabis Bylaw Review Committee, that he.
has a conflict of interest, and I'll, I'll read the political, excuse me, the particular matter, and they're up here for review after the meeting if someone wants to take a look at it. We have another one to read, but this kind of sums it up. I was a former member, former board member of CPC Barry, a cannabis business that has brought proposals in front of the town of Barry regarding conducting cannabis related business in the town and have represented their interests in front of authority boards in the recent past. A business that I own conducts business with CPC Barry and other businesses owned by CPC principal partners and board members. My financial interest in this matter is that if particular cannabis bylaws are adopted by the town's people, by the town's people, my business might have the opportunity to do business with these businesses. And that is just a public disclosure. We don't have to take any action on that at this time. So, am I correct? Um, do you have to make a determination as the appointing official? <coughs> okay. Yeah. Um, my recommendation we put Tom on the committee was because he was biased towards the favorable side of this. Just as my recommendation for Neekers, she's biased, opposed to marijuana. Mm -hmm. So um, it was intentional on my behalf to make sure we had somebody, this a proponent for marijuana on the committee and somebody who's opposed to it. So I understand that and accept his, his conflict. I understand it's there before I ask that he sit on the committee. So under the determination, it'll be determination by appointing authority. Um, they do just have that. You're, uh, you've determined that the financial interest is not so substantial as to be deemed likely to affect the integrity of the services which the municipality may expect from the employee. Dennis? Is there a difference between Mrs. Uh, Jenkins, I think is her last name? Can you speak a little louder? Huh? I believe Jen Mrs. Jenkins, who is Neeker, works for a nonprofit and is not in business to make money with Q Drug. Correct. Mr. Donahue is in business to make money. Were Correct. these things divulged to your members before you agreed to approve them to be on that committee? Or was this done after the fact? This form came in after the fact. Did Mr. Donahue tell you that he worked for that organization before? Yes. So you knew that beforehand? We knew that. He's making an official disclosure. And as I said, that was part of why I requested when he gave his background and said he's worked with them, with that, with you know, the CPC in the development of this invented the meetings. I already knew that, but he did state that. And that's part of why I stated I want to have the idea of the committee isn't to make the bylaws. They're not making any bylaws. No, that's they're our job. they're making they're, right. right. They're here to make recommendations to us. So to make sure the the board hears all sides, I wanted to make sure we got a pro and a con in their ear on that committee. So to have Mr. Donnie, who I th certain think he's going to make sure that the supporters of marijuana have their voice heard, and Nika's going to make sure the people opposed to it have their voice heard. And hopefully the, the rest of the members are someplace down the middle. Let me ask a question then, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. He's in business for marijuana uh, in a profit, working for CC, what did you call CPC. It? It's Mr. Andola's corporation, correct? Yes, yep. he does a lot of business with Mr. Andola. He's Andola, in business as I understand. with him as a for-profit for the marijuana trade. Mrs. Jenkins is not in business. She is a, um, I don't know, consultant. I don't even know what her title would be, but that is a non-profit organization. That's two spectrums. What about people that are just pro-marijuana that don't have a monetary stake in it. Is there anybody with that that was appointed to that committee? Don't know specifically. I don't think most people didn't state pro or against marijuana. Uh, Chris Higgins did say he's not a user of marijuana, but he's there for the businessman perspective in town, how it correlates to other businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a gentleman. Uh, he, we, he, he came to us on the planning board 
and was inquiring as to a business on the bottom of School Street North. Mm -hmm. He owns property down there. And he was looking at possibly opening something up down there, mm -hmm. whether it was a testing lab or something like along those lines. And that was a while ago. So I think he's he was looking at being involved in the business aspect of it. But my concern was that, and I, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other, um, whether you are for or against it, I try to stay neutral with it. Um, but my, my point was that um, I think that conflict of interest, and I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, but I, I would have thought that that would have been brought up beforehand. Not that it would have made a difference in your decision making, because you want for, against, middle of the road, I don't care type of a, a group, so you're pretty well covered with everybody. It just seems. I think it was clear beforehand he's just making it official by putting it in writing. That's all that is? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. we, we very much understood his relationship with, with Mr. Iandoli and, and, and for the marijuana stuff. That's why I said that's, we're trying to get an array, a spectrum of views into this. If they're going to have any meaningful input of all the hours that your board and our board has put into these bylaws and zoning bylaws, um, if we're going to get anything out of it, we need the public input and we need the whole spectrum. And that's why the, the first person I suggest is the last person that was applied is someone that's sort of been a moderator um, for different groups before, looking at both sides and trying to find a happy medium. Hopefully someone like that can listen to it and listen to both sides and look at the bylaws and, and see where they might need to be moved uh, to accommodate. And, and once, once that's done, we may accept or reject their recommendations. It's still, they have no, no monetary gain to this. It's just their ability to make the best recommendation to us, and I thought well, I, I that that gave us a better a better voice for I the people. Under, I've written out um, documents like that before with certain things being on the planning and conservation boards. I I understand the reasoning for it. It's actually to protect yourself and to protect the town because if they're appointed onto a town committee, any time there is a preponderance of evidence to say, well. He works for him, therefore I think he's going to be biased. But if you propose on that statement that that's not going to influence me one way or the other, that's the whole purpose of those forms. I just was curious if mm -hmm. that was the vote beforehand. And I'm not saying anybody's doing anything underhanded. I just I wasn't aware. That's why yeah. I asked. I'm I'm sure that Tom's views represent hundreds of people. I'm sure that Neeker's views represent hundreds of people. I'm sure that our, our um, I don't even call her name, from the senior um, population that came in. Jane. 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 I'm sure she represents hundreds of people. And we've got people that are really representing large groups. And we have another, you know, one, one of the guys has had issues with one of his employees in drug rehab in, in issues. That's, that's a big thing for a lot of people around town. We have a lot of that. So I think we've really got some people in there that represent large portions of our community that have polarized opinions on this for one reason or the other. So I'm, I'm very happy with the committee we have. And I think it's our best chance to get um, a well-rounded input from them. And it may or may not change our decision on what we have for bylaws or zoning bylaws in either of our committees. But I think we're going to get the best input we can from a committee without having us to be at every meeting and listen to it at our our three publicized hearings that we take public input, they're going to have their own meetings and their own input and talk to people, and I think we're going to get a lot more valid data back this way. Um, and understanding fully that he's, I expect him to be biased, that's why I wanted him in there. I expect I, uh, that. I don't want to say too much one way or the other on this, but if people are busy for whatever reasons, a lot of people don't get involved with certain things, they don't want to get involved in town politics or things that affect them. It's kind of sad to see the low number of people that turn out for elections and, pub and town meetings like that. But the, the disheartening part of this whole process was the fact, not only yourselves, but other boards, but working on that bylaw for so long and having very few people even show an interest in it. And then all of a sudden, they come out of the woodwork after the fact. 
can't cry over spilt milk. This is the way it <coughs> happened. We got to deal deal with the hand that was dealt us now. Hopefully, everything will come to fruition for the next town meeting. That that committee can relate to the BOS conservation and planning, and um, the next time around in June at our next town meeting, we can get something proposed on paper to the taxpayers that this is what everybody wants and see how it goes. Hopefully it'll, it'll all work out. I hope so. I'm still waiting to see if our um, moratorium gets kicked back by the state, because I expect it to. I don't think they'll let it go again. I think we'll be running without a moratorium without bylaws. Although by the time they kick it back, it'll be a short, short time. But we need to have some laws in effect, and um, we can always modify them in the future if people don't like portions and meet on those. But we need something well, in, in effect. On the, on the up hand of this, now there's a bunch more people that are interested. And that's good. Okay. We get more ideas and more input. So. Well, my concern, the moratorium, in, is the state wants to see the towns making some effort and some, some work towards this. And despite the effort we've done, what they officially see in town meetings is this is tabled and not even voted on. So as far as the state's concerned, not my guess would be, and this is a guess, that the towns had no effort on this. And I, I think that's bad. We need to get something on paper and get something voted in. And it can be always be modified. You know, any portion that is not survived by the state, the rest still is in effect. Um, so it doesn't hurt us to put something forward. Okay. Following along in that same line of discussion, we have uh, another notice of conflict of interest on this from the one of the alternates on the committee, Hillary Boudreau, and. She states, I am president of the Ruggles Lane PTO. I, I guess that would be conduct outreach to local businesses to secure donations to benefit activities organized to support students at Ruggles Lane School. And her conflict is she helps raise thousands of dollars yearly to benefit the students. So that, she's listing that as a conflict. I don't know if it is or it isn't. But no, without a financial gain, it shouldn't really be a conflict, but better safe than sorry. She's just she's covered. letting it be known that she does that. Well, that's the purpose of those papers. If you yep. have any doubt, fill it out. Shout it out, yep. Yep, yep. so. Absolutely. And nothing against Mr. Johnny. He's a hard-working family man. I'm not saying anything negative about him. I just want to make that clear. Okay. Okay. No one took it that way, Dennis. Okay. We have the April 1st town meeting. Uh, uh, warrant, election warrants. We should have a oh. Mayor. Signed. Yep. We already set that date. Um, Did we vote on the date and accept it? A bunch of these to sign. <coughs> Pardon me? Is it by statute that it's the first? I don't know. I just want to make sure. you guys said the town meeting, but not. If we need to. The election. So the April 1st should be a statutory date. Yeah. Okay, we get Sam? I was, I was asking, I didn't know. When is the latest somebody <coughs> can apply for Do we want to fill this date in today as well? Or no? Yeah, so I guess. What date may it be? I guess we can do. Look it up. Just, well, yeah. Yeah. I think it's today's date that we're signing it, right? Fourth day of February. Fourth, yep. So the fourth and then the February, the next line down. I didn't know, so I figured somebody would know, yeah? In February. And do we have to fill out sign every copy? We do, right? We had a whole yes. bunch yes. of these. <coughs> well, let's split them up right now. We'll take a couple. I'll take a couple. We'll, we'll get them going. How many you got there? What do you got? Three. Three. I got. I got four, five. Here, have another one. Last date of finals, February 11th. Here, you 
put that on the website? Yep. Is it right, like on the front for election? I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure it is. I sometimes find it hard to find things. If you find out now, I can write it down and I can email them. Yeah. The uh, last day to poll papers is the this Thursday. Last day to turn them in is next Monday. Oh, so this Thursday is what? What's the Seven. Seven. Okay, so I should tell them. It's right under latest news, right on the front page. Yeah. Lists all the boards and committees that are available for. Email. Can take papers out. When do the papers have to be turned in? Monday. The eleventh. They can turn. So it's just post weekend. No, they were. They've been available since since. Uh, when was the first date? First date that they were available was January tenth. Or they can call the town clerk and give them the number and the extension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you can come, well, I guess I'm only going to own up for me because I'm not sophisticated enough. I mean, I'm somewhat sophisticated with the, the uh, internet, but I'm not as sophisticated enough. And maybe people my age who might be interested are equally unsophisticated. I don't know. I still have a foot. Okay. You all set? Yeah, I just better if I get them all. Okay, we have the rural schools in advisory letter. Is that in here? Yeah, I, I think I forgot the point. I'm just looking at it. I just noticed I forgot to print it out. Um, this was, I believe I had forwarded this to your guys' email. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it was um, the, there is a letter, and I'll print this off after for your, um, for you guys to sign. I'll leave upstairs for you, for you to come in if you agree. But basically, um, part of the Rural Schools Commission, they're petitioning um, the governor about the, uh, the foundation budget review, and they feel that the, you know, even though they're saying that they took the recommendations of the budget um, or the foundation budget review commission in the budget, they're basically saying, "Well, no, you didn't. You helped out charter schools. Um, you didn't. You didn't do anything to help the towns in the more actual rural areas of town or of the state and central and western Mass." So uh, they have a um, a representative letter from that they're trying to get of all the uh, boards of selectmen from the rural towns to basically petition the governor to reconsider um, the modeling of, of the Chapter 70 uh, allocation. We need that. So as long as you guys are, are in favor of supporting the letter, I'll let you guys look, uh, look at it again. I'll leave a signature copy at Sandy's desk for you to come and sign. Yeah, I saw that. The but you sent out, and I saw some articles in the newspapers about it, and I think one of the things that concerned me was there really wasn't very much there for rural schools, and it was a small amount, but it was, it was there's just a, a few few dollars per student or something. It didn't really yeah, they, add up to very much. Right. The, the way that they had kind of, uh, the, the caveat wording that they put in was rural and charter schools. So right. a lot of that money was really going into charter schools and they were right. kind of putting it into that same line item. So, And I think we've, uh, the voters made it pretty clear a few years ago about their positions on charter schools right. and, and money and uh, apparently some of the powers to be didn't get quite get the message, but I think it... Uh, it's really kind of backhanded. I don't think the charter schools should fall in under rural schools. They don't schooling. care what they voted on. They're just going to do what they want. Right. They're trying to basically put up a front to say that, yeah, we're doing something for rural schools finally. And look look at this money in our giant budget that's going into it, but nobody's seeing on the back end where it says charter right. schools on it. Right. So I think we'll just have to follow it and make sure that mm -hmm. Senator Goldie and Representative Berthew know yep. exactly where we're coming from on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Particularly school transportation. Last year we got a big increase, but that wasn't, wasn't set for every year. So right. I think that 
in another area, and I think that affects rural schools more than anything else. Is the vast amount of transportation money that gets spent. We have a resignation from the 9-11 committee uh, for Colleen Gurton. It, it was verbal. There was no letter. Okay. There was a verbal notice. Uh, and uh, I guess we can say thank you to Colleen for her work on that and all the other stuff, that things that she does with the rescue squad. And, those issues, so we, we thank her for her service on that. And we have a request for appointment to the 9 11 committee from Paul, Paul Murphy. Murphy. Paul Murphy, Paul. Sheldon Road. He's uh, a veteran, post two. Uh, he's retired from the Quabbin Regional School District. He's been a resident of Barry for 27 years, and he'd like to serve on the 9 11. Uh, Memorial Committee. What is the pleasure of the board? I'll make a motion to appoint Paul F. Murphy to the 9-11 Memorial Committee. Okay, and I will second that. Discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Request here to use town property. And to use the town hall from uh, the Woods Memorial Library for a family science program cause cause called Cosmic Kelly, and there will be no food served. To estimate 125 attendees and that came from Stephanie Young the librarian uh, what are the wishes of the board uh, she wants it on April of the 17th from 5 to 8 p.m. we have any conflict with that time no. we do not so this is use of the town building by another town entity mm -hmm. I make a motion we uh, approve the request to use the town property and waive the fee. Okay, I'll make a second. Discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we did have a second time request to use town property okay. coming today. Uh, it should be back here, packet this program, yeah, Quabbin okay. Youth Football. Um, but just oh, use it right. for um, a board I think meeting. I did see that. Yeah. Came in today, but they were looking for next week, so I thought to just move it up to today's agenda. Yeah, I saw that. Where was it? So they just. It should be in the back. They just want to be in here, not in the heavy woods. I know. Not in the heavy woods. They're looking for, building. for town hall, not woods building. Okay, so yeah. up here. Okay. We don't have no, I had it here. I would read all the use. Yeah. I'm already. Do we have a room they can use for that on that day? 30, yeah. 30 people? I'll say. <coughs> okay. This is from the Quabbin Youth Football and Cheering Group. And Mary Bag. Markowski. Mark Markowski, chairperson. Chair They wish to use the town hall on February 12th from 6 to 8 p.m. for a board meeting and a kickoff uh, meeting. They estimate 30 people to attend. There will be no food served. Make a motion to approve the request to use the town hall for Guadalupe Youth Football and Cheer on uh, February 12th, 6 to 8 p.m. Okay, I will second that. In favor? Aye. Okay. <clears throat> we have.
have a wage authorization here from Fire Chief uh, Bob Rogowski, Robert Rogowski, uh, for EMT firefighter Kyle is it Gale? Coley. Coley, okay. And he's working 40 hours per week, 1677 proposed salary, salary effective January 28th this year, 1832, 40 hours per week. What is the pleasure of the board? Uh, this is stuff that you know about we've gone through with them? Yes, yeah, so um, because he just got his paramedics, so he's make any other they're going to move him up a step um, prior to, to basically um, that was both was designated as they uh, both got that or uh, no uh, Kyle was the only one that got hit got his paramedics license okay. but Jason. he's not a fully clear to do on his own right so this put, put us, puts him into an intermediate position until the end of the fiscal year when, they, when he'll be clear and at that point he'll move up to, to the medic the medic position or medic firefighter as it was identified in the so um, Jason received his EM or his EMT license basic so that's why he's uh, going to this step. Is it the full license? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, make a motion to approve uh, both wage grade increases. Okay, now second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, and we have one for, did you do both or get one? I both, I said both, yeah. Okay, and we have one for Jason. For that one. I'll read it. And may I request permission to use the Selectman's meeting rooms at the Henry Woods building for meetings of a yet to be formed trails committee, a non governmental citizens group with a mission to develop trails and vary, encourage public use of all outdoor facilities. This group would be self selected in interested citizens and would be invited by public announcement to join. If a trails committee were to be recommended by the new open space plan, the citizen group might well be the source of talent. I expect to kick off, to, to kick off this effort, hoping that the group will outlive me. We, I assume that's kind of a rhetorical sort of comment. <laughs> We would expect to use the selectmen's meeting room on Wednesday evenings, the, the day when there were no scheduled town board or committee meetings. We realized that in case of conflict, town business would take precedence. Use of this space would be prearranged with your administrative assistant. Thank you uh, for your consideration. It's signed by Ed John Blue. Ed, did you have anything? No, I just, I just want, I came in case you had concerns about any non governmental group. Uh, obviously, I'm trying to avoid all of the public meeting posting and all of that because we don't think that that's necessary to just get an interested group doing something out there in the woods. Okay. So it will be open to the public. It will be open to the public. Yes. Um, is this going to be a regular scheduled meeting or do you have any idea how often you're going to meet on Wednesdays? It will be... I, I try for monthly. Monthly meetings? Um, I know when we get into budgets meetings, budget season, don't we get into Wednesdays? Thursdays. Thursdays? Thursdays. Okay. Yeah, That's my concern. All right, good. Well, I'd make a motion we approve the use of the board meeting room on Wednesdays for Mr. Yagu and his uh, soon to be group. I will second that. Any other discussion? Do you have anything else you wish to add? I think I've come before the board so many times promising things. It's about time I got. Well, this is still another promise, but we'll see. <laughs> I said still another promise, though. We don't have the group yet. That's correct. <laughs> you going to vote? Yes. I'll call for a vote. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That's all we're coming to.
these things, right? And we don't have Hardwick. On their way. The next 15 minutes. Do we have an executive session? No. Um, I don't know if you want to wait for Matt. To do he asked if we wait for all. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's I fine. believe I'm looking at an email correspondence. And this, uh, I thought he wanted to wait for all of them. Right. I was trying to look at the, the correspondence being in. And I'm fine with that. I just knew we were holding up the fire chief's one. So. Yeah. What, what was the other one? Mine. Uh, what's that? Mine. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll give them the respect of waiting. All right. And this uh, notice here is just for our information? Um, so we had originally had On been the, discussing uh, the... Um, we were going to have the discussion with Harwick, New Braintree, and Petersham tonight, but due to the uh, untimely passing of Steve Boudreau, um, Petersham kind of wasn't really in a position of meeting tonight, so okay. we asked to delay it. Okay, so we're just waiting on Hardwick mm -hmm. at this point. Right. And we're just did, gonna did you have anything else you wanted to bring up at this time? Um, report. What? And uh, town administrator report. We can do those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. She's been, been very busy with budget right now, um, crunching numbers together and making sure everything fits and trying to get everything going with the capital. It's really what a lot of my time and energy has been devoted the last few weeks. So um, I did have a few things I was putting together um, for a report that was going to go out today, and um, I can't think of one off the top of my head. Uh, uh, OSHA regulations, that was one. So February 1st, the, uh, the new OSHA regulations have officially come into play for public sector employees, so I've also been working on putting together a, um, a risk management plan for uh, for the town as uh, as required under that statute. So it's moving along, um, not quite there yet, but just at least getting everything on paper, that's the, that's the first key point. And then getting that information out there once it is, is all squared away is gonna be the next step. So two big things we're really working on. Okay, and the Finance Committee player is meeting this Thursday. Okay, I will try to be there. Okay. Then I guess we can declare a quick recess until our counterparts from Hardwick grow up again, unless you have anything else you wish to bring up at this point. I don't, actually. Okay, we'll take a quick break until they show up. I assume they'll be here soon. I'm on the waning end of my, my what? I'm on the waning end of my cold, so I'm happy I made it in tonight. And that's apparently in the middle of his. So my last week and a half have not been productive.
which both come out of the formula grant funding, basically leaving a total assessment of 70, or about $71,000. This, this is using 2020's proposed budget um, so far, but this would show what the 2020 split would be between both towns, where it would be basically 51325 um, would be borne by the town of Barry, and then 19 thousand six seventy five would be borne by um, Hartwick in, in the form of an assessment so that was basically the proposal that we uh, came up with um, uh, for your consideration if I'm right these numbers are up from a year ago weren't they wasn't the participation lower and so the numbers are coming up down there right uh, which is good for, yeah, mean, yeah, which yeah, is good yeah. we're getting I, I think I thought the participation was more like 18 percent we talked about it a year ago or 20 percent right. mm -hmm. so that's that's good to see that climb. That means you're getting a lot more people yeah. like it and are getting involved. Which the idea is, if it's a bigger a bigger place, more people allows a better budget, lets them do more, and gets more participation. Yep. And I, I like it. I like to see the numbers. Me too. Mm -hmm. so. And the uh, chair of the Council on Aging for Hardwick attends uh, select board meetings, and every time she is just good. really happy and reporting back about the activities and the increased interest. Um, we originally, I talked about hoping you guys had a, a portion of contribution like, like this to help offset some of our budget. But my inclination is to is to probably add to the budget. We'll see, well, this will be with the, look, she'll get the look from Claire. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather see um, maybe some of this help lessen our, our, our payout, but I would like to see the ability to add money to the senior center for other programs and other uses and, and give more to the seniors um, is my opinion and it's just an opinion you know what that's worth but that's my hope that by having more money come in we can allow more there and um, not necessarily just cut back on what we spend but but see more for the seniors which has been my goal of this really from the beginning so I'm happy to see the number come up Seventy five hundred was the Thank first you. year um, assessment and that hasn't but, been modified. But the since. block grant was also included. Plus, so on yeah, top plus of the that. grant. On top right. Of that. So but it was about it was about fourteen fourteen thousand. Right. So this is nineteen plus the block grant. So we're really going from fifteen thousand to nineteen. Nineteen plus, plus the block seven, grant. Seven, sorry. Yeah. But, uh, so but, uh, we, but we have a lot more people. Meeting, we had increased right. the um, assessment. Um, just so that we're comparing numbers when yes. we're looking at it. Yeah. So we're really going from, say, 15 to about 26. Including with the block rate. With, with the, the block, block rate. rate. Yes. Okay. With the block yes. Rate. yes. And it wasn't quite at a full participation level this year, um, as far as percentage wise. It was still under this year. The first year was not even. But consider um, that, but that's why I propose it just because we're trying to be reasonable for the Barry residents, say we don't incur the expense. But now I'm kind of an opinion if we've incurred the expense, maybe we get some money back off it. But I'd like to see us be able to put more right. toward the senior center and allow more activities, and that may draw more of them, yeah, which will increase the grant money. And so, in FY18, our, our final approved budget was 65.7, the proposed uh, FY20 budget is 80,151. Excellent. So we are Good. looking. You know, we are moving. That's what I'm going to say. Excellent. So you're looking internal for your own um, finances. You're looking about a fifteen thousand dollar increase from um, year to year. Fourteen and some change. Well, 19, 19's budget was seventy seven to eleven. Okay. So we did do an increase in recognition of the seventy of the seventy five uh, okay. that we got in. Okay. But that would move. It's another three thousand. I mean. Okay. Obviously, if we go off of this assessment, any increases that we have would impact both parties, so we wouldn't want it to just do it in a vacuum and say, hey, we decided to throw another $15,000 into the, into the senior center budget and expect you guys to just take on the uh, proposal. No, the, in, the intent, my proposal intent isn't to try to raise their contribution as well. It's just saying that mm -hmm. if it allows another program down there or something, you know, something to help with the, with the busing or mm -hmm. um, whatever other, I mean, yeah. what do you think of her monthly newsletters? Unbelievably informative. There's a lot going on. It's well thought out. I'm very impressed with what she does down there. Very impressed. Um, and I'd like to encourage that. And she was, um, last I knew, getting them some tablets and computers and trying to get people to 
learn, which is good. And um, just, I like it. Okay, Andrew, what action yeah. do we need? Um, well, you know, if you guys are on board with this type, this um, uh, this formula, the the way that this is proposed, we could really kind of formalize this into into um, an amendment to the agreement, mm -hmm. and then uh, if you want the next, well, you know, we're supposed to meet to discuss the building agreement, hopefully on the fourth, if that would, if that date works for you guys, and we can come back to the table, make sure the wording's correct, and mm -hmm. vote on it then. But I think the main thing is, you know, if, we're, if we want to make sure we want to move into this direction, you know, okay. boards are on board with moving in that direction. And given that he's already said this is increasing the budget, as is, I'm happy with that. So I just, I want, I'd rather see the budget bump up with that contribution, not just our cost come down. And that's what it's done, so I'm, I'm good with that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the only issue is if we sign this before town meeting, what, um, it's going to go on our next year's budget. It's not this year. Right, I agree, but um, if it doesn't pass the town meeting, what happens in that instance? And they don't typically get, they don't go line by line item by line item to cut this. Agree, but I'm just. If it fails, we can come back to the table. Let me just come back. Yeah, we'll be back. We have to if it fails. Same thing with the school budget. I just think of every possible best case scenario. Right, that's right. Well, it's the same thing if the school budget fails. You know, wholeheartedly, they're going to have to come back, and then if it doesn't work, then we'll go to an arbitrator. But but the same thing. Yeah. But they got to try to work it out first. This is Claire Adam, I is chairman of a chairperson of our finance committee. The other question I'm thinking about is on the transportation, the buses and stuff. Does Hadwick have their own? Yes. yes. We have our own buses. Okay. Buses. That's the one that sure we're looking at. Move that was yeah. If that was included in this or not. We're actually looking at move from having two different services to having one common service, and it would yeah. have to be Hardwick service that we're looking to adopt. Ask a question, kind of off the um, related but not related. Um, are you guys looking at bringing, possibly allowing other towns to use your? Because it is such a great center, um, and just kind of reiterating what you heard from some of our other members, uh, Gloria. You know, I, I kind of Raves. wish I was a little older so I could take advantage of it, but. Um, she raves about it, and so the fact that you have such a nice center where other municipalities don't, have you guys looked at the possibility of having other towns participate with you? I don't think open to it. I don't think we've officially okay. um, looked into it, but um, I think that, why don't you come on up, Eileen? Come on. <laughs> have a chair right here with me. I'll move over. Oh, come on over. I haven't have, been approached by. Um, have my chair. Come on. No, come right up. Come sit. Get comfortable. Community. But um, they're still in the works. They're still, they need to talk to town The country chairs up here. And they're selecting on that. Um, one was New Braintree had approached. Um, and then I did get some calls from Peter Sam as well. So they're, because they don't have a center. They don't even have anything up there. Um, but they did give me a call and were asking some questions. So that may be another possibility. What's our capacity for, for more members down and more people coming in? The there? building capacity is 154, I think it is. Okay. And so when we see 166, that's not typically all there at once. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And that, well, you see what I'm saying? I mean, it, the concern is that we get overdoing it's my other worry. No. No. Won't be a problem. No, because it's spread out over the week. Every day is different. Okay. So it's not always the Some same. So that's, a weekly, that's, that's a weekly count? That would be a monthly count. Okay, so you have plenty of room. That, that's what I'm just, see, I don't know. I, I'm I embarrassed to say I haven't, I haven't well, gone down there for any meal times to see what's going on. I work okay, typically so during the yeah, daytime, so I'd love to have gone down and checked it out and see what goes on. Because I just haven't Anytime. got, I might, I might now Anytime. in the winter. I still have some time this winter. We're there. So, You're so all invited. Day. But yeah. so far, this We're actually, working. Um, Wednesday, is it Wednesday? No, the 14th, we're having a pasta bar. 
So you're more than welcome to come down. Let me know when you do that line dancing. Again. I missed that. Uh, okay, I guess we're open to it. We're just up to the other that, town. It's just a good event. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're certainly open to it. I'm just, I'm thinking about it. I can't have gluten, so. Oh. I can't. But I, I got to stop it. I just got to get down there. I'm trying. Paying for the building. We have nothing else going on. And if you have a broader population right. offset the cost, that's going to, you know, free up some of maybe potentially some of Barry's funds or whatever to mm -hmm. offer more programs there. Yeah, yeah so we would bring them in, you know, that the fact that we're setting this baseline of percentage usage it kind of really sets the baseline for any other towns yeah. coming in to sure. say, you know, we'll, we'll start you off at, you know, a certain, what we think it would be your contri contribution for the first year and then after that. This would basically be at the end of the calendar year. We'd look at this and uh, enact it into the next year's fiscal year budget. Mm -hmm. so. so do you envision that once we sign this um, updated payment that this would be an annual review we would continue to do? And yes. kind of have I would think so. Yeah. yeah, that's still, that's still <coughs> in the... I believe it's in the agreement. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Great. We do it In regards to the, the closeout at, at the end mm -hmm. and um, money's left over, mm -hmm. and so there were two options on how to deal with that, whether it be reimbursement or whether it be um, uh, a reduced assessment okay. the following fiscal year, right? Mm -hmm. So, do it, should we be talking about that or and include language? Yeah, well, let's include in language in that because we were discussing that on the other agreements. But I do think that that is uh, important that for any uh, any, yeah. any excess funds to be Not that used to reduce the assessment proportionally. So, okay. Yeah. Do you have anything else you wish to? Yeah, that's good. Just to thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's been a great. Thank it's been a great experience. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah. we were hated when we first put yeah. this in place. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 oh because you were closing down what you had. Yes. Yeah. And she yeah. comes in now and it ad actually admits I knew I didn't think it would work. I didn't. And she's just. It's those mean people in Barry. You got to stay away from them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Selectly so awful very, to deal she's with. She's very happy. Yeah. Good. Part of it is socializing. Socializing with just your community, but then you're also reaching out and having exposure to different programs that we couldn't offer, or you know. So I think it's a huge benefit for yeah. our population everybody and, and all for everybody, the resources absolutely. Resources that have been made available, absolutely. but just social context, just just just, just constant it's social context. Their social network, yeah. and that's it's key. And learning how to get on Facebook and do it, <laughs> right? Well, we certainly have a very good director and. Been working very hard thank to make you. sure it goes. Yeah. We do well. hear good things about yeah. that. Good, as well. good. So. Thank we you. thank you Brian. for that. We yeah. thank you for that. I think we all appreciate what you do. We, we you. certainly do. You can like me on Facebook. <laughs> Barry C O A. Okay. All right. So I guess we don't need any votes tonight. It just uh, yeah, we'll get the wording in place. Start, start the wording and get that signed. We can sign that new agreement next time. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Thank well, we thank you for coming to our meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I guess we all start talking to Peter Sand next. New Braintree. New Braintree too. Okay. 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 So when you see, it was a more of a push. Well, but the, the, the well the point is that they're asking if we're open to more towns, and if we are, then we'd say yeah. If we see people from other towns, why not talk to them and encourage them to uh, open a dialogue. Yeah, and they can contact us for a reference. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. You're part of it. They can contact you directly. Maybe they, and they can stop in anyway. Thank Any individual can in. stop in and check out the senior center whenever they want, right? They don't have to be from the town to go have a meal there. So, have a good night. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Eileen. Okay. We have any other. Great business to come before this ponderous board tonight. That's all I got. For Hear, hearing. Well, but let's linger on that for a second and uh, take a second to thank you, Charlie, because you're the one that started that and got that going. You did a good job with that. Yep. And people should know that. That was Charlie's meeting with them to start that. They okay. wanted to meet with him privately one on one because this was so touching with their town and stuff, and it's gone very well. I think they did well, a good job you. working it out. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Very happy for how it's turning out. And on that note, I'll look for the appropriate motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. And we can just. Aye.